Okay, good morning. What I try to do is I try to tell you how to organize my implant case. It's just my routine walk. And today I will use two implant placement as an example. The key is to show you step by step how I put these two implants. We will start from the diagnosis, treatment planning, and execution of implant placement. First, this is a 26 years old, has several spaces right here, but down below, for this space, I'm going to close this space because this patient has class three anterior close by. By closing the space, I'll be able to correct the anterior close by. And she also have the fracture of upper left first molar, so we're going to take that out. So by closing the space, you'll be able to see that within 23 months, we'll be able to correct this anterior cross by. Also, we also wanted to solve the asymmetry for this case. Asymmetry is so severe, if you look at this front of you, you'll be able to see that functional shift and anterior cross by create a severe asymmetry in this case. And by closing and retracting the lower dentition, we'll be able to solve these two severe problems. And after that, we can consolidate, consolidate the space in these two areas. So that's the area we're going to put our dental implant. So 23 months in treatment, we'll be able to solve the major problem to set up a good structure for implant placement. For the right side is second premolar, and the left hand side is the first molar. So that's what we have. So for the right hand side, I think it's quite easy because the depth is okay. But for the left hand side, because the sinus flow is quite low, so I think it's moderate. Uh, consider the difficulty level. So we take a common CT, and probably the most important for the common CT is to take the slide view. And for the slide view, we'll be able to see the depth of the implant side. So we start with right hand side, which is quite easy. And the thickness of the ridge bone is about six millimeter. For six millimeter, we're going to put a four millimeter straight by nine millimeter depth. And the heating abutment will be 5.5 by four. So that's how we, we, we drill a hole and we use this indicator and take this for take this x-ray to look at the parallel and the depth of this uh, this tree. And finally we put that is the step by step. We make incision and we raise the thread. After we raise the thread, I check the thickness. It's exact like the one we saw in our slide view is six millimeter. So we're going to put a trigger right here. We trigger right in the middle of the ridge and hopefully we will have enough thickness for the buckle bone. Step by step, oh, sorry. For here, we put this indicator, take x-ray and check the parallel and we find out we have a, a little bit thick labia bone is about 1.5. Ideally, I would love to have two millimeter, but nothing is perfect. So 1.5, I think is acceptable. So we put this four millimeter, four millimeter diameter and with nine millimeter lens. Ostra, this is Ostra speed, Ostra speed. Just uh, Dr. Holman mentioned about the surface treatment method. And after we put, it's a bone level, 
with internal connect. So I put the heat in the bottom and it's 5.5 by 4. And ideally, as I mentioned before, idea sickness, I would love to have two millimeter buckle bone to follow this two millimeter buckle bone sickness and three millimeter depth rule. Two B three D rule. Right here. But for this case, it's less than my idea. So to conclude the right hand side, I think this is quite easy and quite clean. And one piece of advice, if you're going to take a photo in every procedure, I would suggest you to clean the surface. Don't let to clean those brush and let it do clean like this. But it takes a lot of time. But for beginner, I think it's worse to, to do this way. So the conclusion for the right hand side is easy. It only took me about 15 minutes to do this side. It's much better to do orthodontic because orthodontic takes two or three years. So it's labor intensive. For this implant, it's easy to make money. That's why Dr. Homer is so passionate with implant time. <laughs> he has no <laughs> desire to learn orthodontic. <laughs> For the left hand side, it's a little bit difficult because the sinus floor is quite low. And when I check the x-ray and also the slide view in Combin City, we figured out it's only five millimeter. For this slide view, only five millimeter right here. So we are going to make a decision whether we want to do a show imprint or we want to make some bone grafting, like sinus dip with bone grafting. So the decision Making tree for this kind of case, I would we would divide it based on the previous Dr. Homer talked about the decision making tree for the sinus slip. If it's for this case, it's five millimeter, so it fall into this category. We're going to follow this trait, and for four to five millimeter with single. And if you have six to eight millimeter reach thickness with normal occlusion, then we will go to this way. But for heavy occlusion, we might want to have sinus dip. For this case, because it's five millimeter single, single imprint, and the patient is a lady. So for lady, it's not likely to have a heavy occlusion. So for this one, we decide to have crystal approach and put a to to elevate the sinus floor and put a bone grafting and put this dental imprint about from we decide to have nine millimeter nails. So that's step by step we summers crystal measure. First we make an incision and for here and after the incision, I check the thickness of the bone. For this one, this side is okay. It's, it's pretty wide. And I would like to share with you for the palatal side. I would love to move this incision line a little bit labial palatally because when I raise the fat, it will be easy for me just to raise this side and easy to make a drill. But for teaching purpose, because I want to show you the reach, I'm going to also raise the palatal side. But if you don't want to show the reach, you just want to make a trim, flat the palatal side would be enough to make a perfect tree. So incision design is important. That's how I learned from this course. So we start with make sure that we don't get over five millimeter. So here I have a marker right here. So I make sure that every time the dense is five millimeter, otherwise you might pop into the sinus. So that's how I, and after that I check the, the parallel of my treating and I find out this side is too close to the motor. 
and this side to be one. So I don't want this. I want to. I, I change it a little bit to change the creating direction. So I don't want this one. I would prefer to have equally distribute the space. In other way, in other word, I want to put right in the middle of the ridge. But uh, distal, measure distal. For the buckle lingoli, I would like to have two millimeter buckle bone signals. So I check the lens, make sure it's five minute, no more than five millimeter. And after that, I check with x-ray. I find out that it's just right on the bottom of the sinus probe. Five millimeter is the key. So I left about two millimeter, right? Two and a half millimeter buckles, bone thickness. That's, that's the idea. Let's follow the 2B3D rule, two and a half millimeter. And after that, as a routine in our implant center, we love to have some PRF. We use PRF to put in this drilling hole as a cushion. So when I make summer's measure, you will feel a much better cushion use this PIF. And after PIF, I put some bone grafting. Let me show you that that's our bone grafting. But the bone graft material in sinus blade is not critical because in this situation, virtually all kinds of bone even you don't put a bone, if you have blood club there, they still will form the bone, the new bone. So I use a summer's measure, gradually raise the flow of the sinus. And that's the material I use in this measure. You, if you look at carefully, here, right here, you'll be able to see that used to be this line is right here, and then we probably get into about four millimeter into the sinus. And that's the cartoon show you how we raise the flow of the sinus. And you can listen to the sound that, sorry, that it, you, you may be able to tell the difference when you when you knock it. So it's not difficult to do that, but you it takes time, maybe about two, five to ten minutes to raise the after you raise the floor, you put a, a bone graft in and you put this dental in there. I pick five by nine millimeter because the reach is wide enough and I'm not crazy about the dance. I think Nine millimeter is enough. Not long. It's not longer. Is the better for this? I think five, nine millimeter is long enough. The other tip I would like to share with you is: every time I have bone grafting, it would be better to make a primary closure. In order to make primary closure, I will use the cover screw in this situation. The other tip is, if there is any irregularity in this bone bridge, I would suggest you to label the surrounding bone. Otherwise, when you change to the healing above, the healing above may not be sit into the chronic seal. Finally, I prefer to use Gore-Tex suture. And I always want to use, I, this is my hobby. I like to use this diagram to check. Measure distal right in the middle, buckle linko, and this two millimeter buckle bone thickness. Tip from the future. Possessed margin is three millimeter and angulation less than 15 degree angulate. And distance to the natural tooth is over 1.5 millimeter. That is my routine 
if you use this table to check, um, most likely you will get a pretty good position of your input placement. And if you are interested in this table, you can go to this reference. 2B3D rule for infant planning, placement, and restoration, ICOI, three years ago. And they have a detailed description of this procedure. And finally, I will show you the, the x-ray. And let me pull that up for you to see, to check. It's just touch the floor of the sinus. That's because from the slide view, you'll be able to detect the lens of that. <laughs> and after that, you raise the floor and you put a bone graphic. Remember, bone graph material is not critical in sinus there. All kind of, any bone graph material will grow in this situation. For this, uh, we, we put this side. It's like a dome shape. If you see the dome shape, it means that that's pretty good execution for sinus lip. And it's not difficult, even beginner. I am beginner. I think it's uh, quite easy to do. Finally, that's the prescription for the post-operation care for sinus lip. Uh, we always give this kind of prescription, and it will be good for you. Set up as a routine. So every time you have sinus sleep, always remind patient and always keep those medication. To conclude today's presentation, I truly believe for beginner, step by step is very critical. If you just beginner and you don't want to document step by step. It's quite, uh, sometimes something gets wrong and you, you cannot realize. But if you document every step and you study from this material, you'll be able to find out your mistake. And next time, you fix it, your mistake. Because that mistake is your mistake, not Dr. Homer's mistake. Because Homer, he never make any mistake. But for Oriental, we are so stupid, we make a lot of mistakes. It, it's better to have step by step. With that, I want to thank you for your lesson. Thank you.